Well, can you, Beth, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, good. Good luck running. Um, so I just want to say, first off, thank you to you, and just um, thanks to God for inviting me here to come and speak and to share a word on leadership and, and what God's doing in His church. And, and um, it's, it's an amazing time, uh, I feel, in just being thankful to the Lord uh, while we're approaching Thanksgiving. We'll have tons of food and fill our bellies and, and then feel maybe slightly sick for eating so much afterwards, <laughs> which is always good because then you have to shed a few pounds, but that's, or not. But, uh, but, uh, but I do want to say thank you and, and thank you to the Lord for um, being able to speak this morning. And so... Godly leadership, or God's leadership, is, is what I want to talk about today, or what I was invited to speak here today about. I'll get that closer. Whoa, that's a lot louder. Better, not better, 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 yeah? Okay, there we go. Um, and, and I was told, uh, Lee told me he was doing a series this, uh, this month on, on different topics, and, um, and if I would like, I could speak on any of the topics, and, and God, the leadership really struck me uh, when, when, that, when I heard that that was an option. So, I'm going to talk about God's leadership this morning, and, and building up to today, I was thinking about godly leadership, and so I just, I stopped and started writing different qualities and thinking about different qualities you might see in a leader. You know, I came across different characteristics you might see in a leader, uh, but none of the characteristics seemed to satisfy what I felt was a true leader of God. Um, I mean, they were characteristics, but you could see them. Uh, God's leadership takes on multiple characteristics. There's many types of leadership. So they all fall, fell short in finding the definition um, that could define what true godly leadership was. And then as I thought and prayed about it more, uh, it, it came to me that godly leadership is not defined so much by characteristics, but that um, you know, we see in the Bible time and time again, God takes uncommon people or common people to do extraordinary things. So he takes common people to do extraordinary things. Many of them have character flaws and things that don't really make them look like they would be a good leader. So a person's leadership does not depend so much upon them, but rather it depends first and foremost on their relationship with God and the condition of their heart. God is the definition of a leader because God is the ultimate leader. So our leadership is not based in ourselves, but it's based first and foremost in God, who is the one who really leads. And whenever we, we read in the Bible and see that a, a leader would stray from God, that's when things would really go wrong. We see that time and time again in the Old Testament with the kings of Israel who were anointed, or they were the leaders of the country, but God had to strike them down or bring someone else into leadership because their hearts weren't following the Lord. So, if you'll slide, go to the next slide. These are the four central main points um, that I found in maybe leadership, in godly leadership. First and foremost, the relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And we find Jesus talking in Matthew and in the Gospel lessons that one must have a servant's heart and a humble heart before the Lord. And that's where our hearts are must start before any other characteristics are built. And after that, we find that all of us are called to lead in different ways in the body of Christ. You know, everyone has a different form of leadership, and we're all ministers in Christ's body. You know, some of you have skills that you can do that, that others cannot. Some of you are parents, and that is a godly leadership in and of itself. To lead your or lead your kids valiantly. So these four points, I feel, are, are ways that God works in leadership and works on our hearts. Relationship with the Lord, a servant's heart, a humble heart, and that we are all leaders 
and not one particular person is necessary of a leader, but we all need each other. You go to the next slide. And then there's four points that I feel I came up with that I see in Scripture and what, the, what, what God does to build and to make a leader. God is the one who calls out. He chooses and He initiates people. God confirms, as He said to Jesus after He was baptized, You are my Son, with whom I am well pleased. God builds and trains us. And we listen and we serve and we follow Him as He guides. And then He leads and guides us along the way. And we follow where He leads. And this always comes back to the primary point that we are to have a relationship with the Lord. So I'm going to focus primarily on these four methods here, and, and I hope you can see how the first four points are interweaved within them. First point in how we are called out by God and how God calls us out. What does it look like to be called out by God? Let's first take a look at the story of Moses. Moses was a common man. He was a sheep herder. He was walking out in the pasture one day with his flock, and he stumbled upon a burning bush. That would probably scare a lot of people. Whoa, this bush is burning, but it's not actually burning up. Uh, and from the bush, God spoke. And he told Moses to go to Pharaoh and let the Israelites go free. Moses was just called out by God. Moses said, and he felt that he was the wrong person, and he asked God to send someone else. But God had a different plan, and God wanted Moses. God equipped Moses with signs and wonders. He could have chosen someone else, someone who was a better speaker, or someone who wasn't afraid. But he called Moses out. He chose him, and he set him apart. Moses didn't have qualities that seemed great. But when Moses goes to Egypt, God has built and trained him up so that he could be a strong leader, a strong voice, and a new man. God transformed Moses into the man he needed for his will. So I want to bring this back. What does that look like in your life? Is God calling you out right now? Are you doing what God wants you to do? Or maybe are you afraid, just like Moses was? Maybe God's calling you to step out and lead. Has God ever told you to do something and you shied away from doing it? Don't be afraid, but put your strength in the Lord. Maybe God's calling you out where you work or at school. Maybe he wants you to go to speak to someone specifically. Maybe he wants you to, to step up and lead here in the church congregation in one way or the next. And there's all, all different types of leadership. If you're a parent, you have the responsibility and the joy from the Lord to lead your kids and to lead them spiritually. That is a joyful leadership. Let's move on to point number two, God confirms. In our own prayers, we seek God's confirmation. We ask God, is this what you want me to do, God? We seek His will in our daily decisions and wait upon His confirmation and guidance. Being called out by God is different than being confirmed by God. Called out begins with God taking you from one place in your life to another, but confirmation focuses more on God's approval of what is already happening or what is about to happen. After Jesus was baptized in the water, God said, This is my Son, with whom I am well pleased. At that moment, Jesus received confirmation from His Father. This, I could imagine, was an extremely important moment in Jesus' life to receive that confirmation. And everyone in here who is a parent or, or has kids knows that their kids seek confirmation from them. You know, dad, Dad, did I do it right? Or, or 
And do I have what it takes? Kids long for their parents' confirmation and to know that they have what it takes, that they're worth it, and that they can do it. And this is exactly what Jesus had at that moment where God said, you have what it takes, and I'm pleased with you. The story of Jehu today uh, from the Old Testament is one of my favorite stories. And um, for a variety of reasons. But, but there's a lot of excitement going on in there. Um, who, who in here has read the story of Jehu before? Just, just raise your hand. So it's a pretty crazy story. And Jehu is a pretty crazy and wild man. But Jehu was the highest ranking commander in the Israelite armies. And he was with his troops when the young soldier, or, or he was with his troops when the young prophet, who was sent by Elisha, came running into the camp. Jehu then goes into the small room with the young prophet, and the prophet anoints him as king, an anointing that came from God himself. In ways you can see both confirmation and being called out happening right here at this moment. But it was coming from God through the prophet. After that, we see, see Jehu taking up his call from God, killing the kings who were desecrating God's temple and who had strayed from God. He kills the kings. He kills all the king's sons, which were 70, 70 total. And then he goes and kills all the, uh, the prophets who were, you could say, prophets to idols. Or not prophets, the priests of the idols. And so, Jehu was anointed as king by God because he was a wild man and he was fierce. And God knew that he could trust Jehu to stop idol worship in Israel. So God confirmed Jehu as king and led him valiantly through those trials. Now how do we apply this to our own lives? God can confirm things in your own lives in a variety of ways. Someone else may come to you and say, I was praying for you, and I feel God wants me to tell you this. Or you may notice circumstances in your life that seem to be confirming Everything that God is leading you towards. You, you, you might have been praying for it, and you just see little things start to line up and happen. And how God is confirming that you are doing what He wants you to do. It may be a song on the radio. Scriptures that come to your heart, or the presence of the Spirit leading you into the right situations. I, I had a prayer on my heart uh, one time through the summer here. Um, I, I just, my heart was really going out to young men and wanting to help train uh, young men to be godly men. And uh, I had an old friend call me, uh, who's a student at BB, and he said, Eric, we're doing a Bible study down here, and we're going through the book Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. And, uh, you know, I really, I was praying about it, and, and I felt God telling me that I should call you and ask you to come mentor us as men. And, and mentor me as a young man. And so just a prayer of my heart had been confirmed and answered um, by God. And, and it's, it's been an amazing time with them. We're, my dad, he's here. Uh, we were out at the farm just yesterday. Uh, we were shooting guns and, and riding four-wheelers and, and um, throwing tomahawks and, and uh, shooting bows and doing a bunch of wild and crazy things. But at the same time, we've been going through this book and, and how does God call us out to be men. And, um, and so it's been a transformation process for all of us since the start of their school year. But God confirms. He calls out and He confirms us. Point number three, God builds and trains. If God wants someone to lead, He will prepare the person for the task ahead. We see this throughout the scriptures. God prepares his leaders. After Jesus was baptized, he was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit. And for 40 days and 40 nights, 
He was tested. During those 40 days and 40 nights, he had to rely solely on the power of God because he didn't eat any food or drink any water. And which sounds really crazy because they say you can't go three days without drinking water before you would die. But Jesus made it 40. I could imagine those 40 days were pretty intense. But they were definitely a time of building and training where Jesus had to rely solely on the power of God. The circumstances we are in now as Christians are time of preparation for the next place God will call us to. He uses us here in this moment, right here and right now, but it's also a preparation and building and a training period. If you are about to have kids, God may want to be preparing or building you or training you to be a godly leader and how you can be a godly parent. If God wants you go to go to Africa to dig wells for people who need water, He will prepare your heart and He will help build you and train you in that process to get ready for Africa, which I hear they have big mosquitoes. <laughs> But um, we go back to the scriptures and we see Jacob. Before Jacob could be the man that God wanted him to be, Jacob had to be tested. His heart had to be trained to be a fierce leader and challenged. So we see Jacob sending his family across the river. And Jacob stayed on the other side. And through the other night, God challenged him to a wrestling match. God needed a fierce man, and to do it, he challenged Jacob. And the next day after they've been wrestling, oh man, all night, all night of wrestling. Some of you probably have had long days at work. You could imagine wrestling with God all night. That would be wearing and trying. But in the process, Jacob's heart has changed, and he's given a new name. Okay. Okay. Now I ask the question, in what ways is God building and training you? Is God training you to rely on Him more? What circumstances are you in? Do you need more faith? Do you desire to lead a small group but aren't sure how? And how is God preparing your heart for what's next? How is he building and training you right where you're at, right now? We'll go to point number four. God leads and guides the way, and we follow. When we sum it all up at the end, we must fall back on our knees and let God guide and direct our lives. Our lives are not, a, not our own, and we were bought with a price. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, Anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. True leadership loses his life in Jesus. He is self-sacrificing and gives himself up. His ambitions, his desires, or our ambitions, our desires, our wants, fall short in the end when we submit our lives to God. God directs our ambitions, and when our goals and dreams are God's goals and God's dreams, then our hearts are in the right place for God's will for our life. God truly cares about the condition of our hearts in His process of leadership. He's looking for humble hearts that will serve Him. And when we are humble, with a servant heart, then God takes us and leads us in great ways. From there, God strengthens us. He gives us courage, gives us a vision or a dream of what lies ahead. Or sometimes He just says, have faith and trust me. I won't show you the way, but I am the way. So trust me. Depending on the situation, God sought certain character traits for His will to be done. But sometimes, and a lot of times actually, He would train certain people to have certain character traits. Some to be madmen. Others to lead with a quiet spirit. Others with the gift of 
maybe baking or cooking that I don't have as a bachelor. <laughs> but some of you do. Others to have courage. Others to lead kids. Others to do amazing things at a school or amazing things where you work. Others to pour out wisdom with a quiet and gentle heart. But that younger generations would come to you and seek your wisdom. There's many different types of leadership, but true leadership will always follow God first. And when you follow God first, then you can't go wrong. So we find here that God is the ultimate leader, and He desires truly to know us, to have a relationship with Him, and to follow Him. God is the one who takes common people to do extraordinary things. So I say to you, fully submit your heart to God and see how He leads you and see where He can take you. Now, I was asked today, and, and Gary asked me, he said, where are you at now? What, what are you doing with, with your life? And uh, sometimes I ask the same question. Like, what am I doing with my life? Um, so I want to share with you how I feel God is leading me. And, and I did share that but I am helping with the young men's, uh, young men's uh, Bible study down at BD College. Uh, but where am I at? I'm, I'm living in, in Royal, and in a couple weeks I'll be moved to Lynn Grove. Uh, I work at a winery uh, full-time, and a couple months ago I uh, was working part-time at the winery, part-time as a youth director at Bethlehem and, and Hope Lutheran Churches in Royal and Everly. But I felt God leading me to step out of the youth ministry for the next purpose and plan in my life. And so I worked full time at the winery and bed and breakfast by Lynn Grove. And uh, I see how God is already working and moving there. Um, the owners are a solid Christian couple, uh, Paul and Sheila Thompson, if you know them. And uh, it's fun to, um, you could say, submit to them as godly leaders as, as they lead us in the business but then also as solid Christian leaders. And, um, so, and, and I'm not sure exactly what all God is going to do, and, and we're praying about that together, Paul, Sheila, and Neil and I, and how, how God can use the, the winery to reach people for Christ. And we already see that he's been using the bed and breakfast to reach people. God's also leading me in what you could say a, a house church type ministry where I'm worshiping with other believers in homes and um, there's all types of ministries and how God uses people and so um, God is, that's one way or place God has led me. I have one more thing, the, a personal story that I want to share and I feel God has put it on my heart to share with numerous and multiple people. And uh, at different times, God has given me the gift of, you could say, having visions or dreams will come to me. Or he'll show me particular things. And so, um, with this, I want to say, in everything, seek the Lord with the scriptures and seek the Lord in prayer. Don't go just off of my word, but go off where God is leading. But uh, God was showing me one day um, in a vision. He had taken me um, on a path and, and uh, taken me to a stream. And, and he showed me this dream and he said, Eric, this is my spirit right now. But what I want to do in the hearts and lives of believers here and, and all over this country is to pour out my spirit more and deeper. And I want my spirit to be a flowing river in people's lives. And so if there's an encouragement I could give, it would be to seek the Lord deeper than you ever have before because he is seeking to pour His Spirit out into our hearts and into our souls and into our lives. Um, right now we're in a time, some of you may be wondering, what's going to happen to our country? Our, our economy, we just had the elections and, and people are thinking, some people might be thinking, they're finally over, I'm tired of getting all this mail. And, uh, or I'm tired of all the press and what's going on. Um, but God has showed me specifically with, with what's going on in America, that we're in a time where, or we're coming into a time, where he's starting to sift Christians in America to see if our hearts are really on fire for him. And it's happening throughout the whole country. And 
And I feel the sifting is going to grow greater and greater in this country. Um, whether through hard times economically or, or um, we already see natural disasters happening that are trying our hearts and our lives. But, um, but God is sifting us and he, and he just desires for us to want to know him more and to step out continually in our faith with him. So, so if there's anything I could say, um, it would just be turn to the Lord and um, don't go off by anything what I say, but just truly seek the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And, uh, and he'll lead and guide the way. So, um, if you'll just pray with me. Lord, we just right now we just submit all our prayers, all our joys, everything that's going on in our life, we just uh, submit it up to you as an offering for, for praise, as an offering for worship, that our lives could be just an offering to you. And uh, Lord, you are a leader. You are the one who guides and directs our hearts. Help us to have servant hearts, <coughs> humble hearts, and that we could just know you deeply and know you more. And just as we were singing about earlier, Lord, I just pray that the power of your Spirit would work and move amongst us as, as, uh, as your body, as Christians, that, that you would just be a wellspring of life just pouring inside, and, and that you would just be overflowing from inside of us, full of joy and compassion, but then a spirit of power and strength that only you give us. Lord, I thank you so much for this congregation. I just, I just pray so much that you would continue to use them as a witness for your gospel with Jesus and, and that they can go and just really reach people's hearts and taking the power of the gospel uh, here in Spencer or wherever they live. Continue to build and raise up leaders here in this congregation of all different kinds. Ones that could lead in all areas of life. You know, whether at the job or at school or here in the congregation. Our kids, for young adults. Lord, I just pray for every aspect of the church that you continue to bless them. And fill them with your strength and power. Lord, uh, I just thank you so much um, for all that you are doing. We just, we just praise you. And we praise your name. And we praise you for all that you are doing. And uh, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.